Hello guys and welcome back. In the previous part we learned how to set up a scene or a new unit project and how to make our paddle move up and down like this. And now in this episode we will make the paddle be constrained to the game screen. As it is now you can see that I can move outside of the game screen or down below. And we will also be adding a ball to this. But first of all, we should take a decision about our gaming screen or scene. So if we go to the game scene, you will probably, in a new project, start with free aspect. And what this is, is that if we resize the screen now, we can see that the paddle moves in relation to the screen size. It's in a fixed position in the world. Also, if we change the height, it's the same. It moves and becomes very small and moves to the center of the screen. And we don't really want that. This is quite a bother and then we would need to fix this with script so that if the player resizes the windows, everything stays where they're supposed to be. And no one really scales the windows in a, in a game. So we shouldn't need to count for that. So what we will do to make life easier is to force a 69 ratio. Now if we change, you see that the only thing that happens is that the game, si uh, game screen becomes smaller. Everything is zoomed out or in. But it stays where it's supposed to be in relation to everything else. Alright. Um, we also have another decision to make. And it's how are we going to constrain our paddle inside of the game screen. So, how are we going to constrain the paddle from going outside of the boundaries? could do it in two ways. One is to do it by code entirely and say that if the Y position is greater than something, then we will clamp it to the maximum Y and the same for the minimum. So, it won't be able to leave this screen. The other is to solve it by using colliders. So by setting up a wall here, up here and a, a wall down there and add a collider to them then the paddle would collide with the wall and then wouldn't be able to go further choosing one of these you should also remember that the ball should go under the same rules so how do we make the ball stay inside of the area game area and how do we make it collide with the paddle we could use code for that as well the same code if it's greater than a certain y then we will clamp it and or rather we will invert the y direction and then if we we'll probably in, in that case we would probably use triggers to collide with the paddle and then change the direction based on where on the paddle we're, we're hitting it but that requires quite a lot of code it's not very much or hard to do but it still requires a bit the other approach is to go with colliders here as well. So we will add a physics material to the ball so that it's perfectly bouncy. Then, and then a collider on the paddle and a collider on the ball. And when they collide, it will bounce off it. Then we will have a scenario where, for instance, what if I want the paddle to make the ball bounce off different angles depending on where on the paddle it hits. So say that the ball is bouncing off exactly the center, then it should go bounce off with the same angle it had coming in, it should go out. But if the further, the closer to the edges we hit it with the ball, it should receive a greater angle when it's bouncing off. Uh, we could solve that by code by using sinus on trigonometry. Or, if we wanted to use colliders to solve it, we would have to make our paddle round. That would be having the same effect. Almost the same effect. Because if you're making the paddle round, then the collider is out here instead. So we won't be able to have a flat uh, paddle. So it's all about the game you want to make. But I think for this, going with colliders will make life a bit easier. So. I will start with that approach and if I will notice that it won't work later on, then we can change it. So, 
let's create a wall then let's go back to the scene let's create another an, a game, an empty game object first call it environment and inside of it we'll create a 2d object and sprite again and call it top wall let's we forgot to reset the transform of the uh, environment game object you should always uh, reset the transforms of the parent objects now it's in the right in the center we give it the same sprite as we gave the paddle and then move it up a bit and see where it should be somewhere around there looks good five let's make it a bit bigger how big should it be something like that 115 seems good make it twice as uh, high and this will also need a rigid body and a collider but this time the rigid body should be static because we don't want the wall to ever move you can also set it static up here like that and then we will duplicate this top wall rename it bottom wall and change the transform to minus 5 in the y direction now we have two walls let's see if our player can move outside of the game skin or if it's constrained by the colliders on the walls see now i can't move outside of it anymore so we are restricted great let's add a ball as well to this and moved up yeah, a sprite once again and call it ball we center it we reset its position this time we will give it a sprite of a knob so it becomes round let's double its uh, scale great let's make a oh we should also give this one a rigid body it should be dynamic and don't forget to remove the gravity scale set it to zero and then a collider as well but this time a circle collider great now we'll create a script for the ball call it ball this will only be a temporary script we will change all of this the contents of the ball later on this is just for testing now so go to the code open ball let's give the ball a move speed as well private float move speed let's set it to 10 and also for testing purposes let's set a starting direction that the ball can move right on the start to test colliders so serialize field private and this is a vector 2 <coughs> start direction you set the direction in the awake method and we set it to the velocity so we need to have the rigid body component private rigid body body grab the reference equal to get component and then rigid body dot velocity equal move speed times start direction so remember this is already a vector so we only need to multiply it by a move speed great let's see if this works go back inside of the game click on the ball and see that the starting direction is zero zero which means that if we multiply 10 by 0, 0, we will end up with a 0 value, so it will stand still. Yep. So, which means if we set the direction to minus 1, we should expect the ball to start flying off in the left direction at start. Let's try it out. Yep. It went straight to the left. And we could see that the paddle went with it when they hit each other. Um, something I forgot to make on the paddle was in 
uh, panels, rigid body, go to constraints and freeze its Z position, uh, rotation, and do the same thing with the ball. It doesn't, we can't see it rotate, but it's unnecessary. Okay, now we want the ball to perfectly bounce off the paddle when they hit, so we should assign a physics material to the ball. Let's create a new physics material, make it a 2D, call it bounce, set the friction down to zero and the bounciness up to one. One is the maximum value. And then drag the bounce to the ball. Okay, now we try to make it again. Test it out again. You can see that when they hit, the panel keeps going in the direction that the ball came. And what is happening here is the conservation of energy, physics law. It's because if you are looking at the ball, we can see that it has a mass of one. And if we go to the panel, we can see it also has a mass of one. So they weight equally much, which means that all of the energy that this ball has when it collides with the paddle because of the perfect bounce all of that energy from the ball will transfer to the paddle and the paddle will keep going in the direction with the same speed that the ball hit it with uh, we could demonstrate this by increasing the mass to double that of the ball for the paddle which will make when the ball hit it then they will split the energy and the ball will go back with half of its, its initial speed while the panel will move to the left with half of the initial speed of the ball. You see? So, but we don't really want the panel to move at all when it's hit by the ball. So what we should do, and I consider this a bit of a hack, but it's the best we can do with now if you don't want to use code for this. And it's increasing this mass uh, by a lot. This is the maximum value. So if we let them collide now, you can see that the panel doesn't move at all, or it does move, but very, very little. If we don't want it to move at all, we could also decrease the ball's mass to the minimum, minimum value. Like this. Now we would see that it doesn't move anything. It's perfectly still. But you could think of a feature in the game where perhaps the player picks up a power up that is nerfing the other player by decreasing its mass, which means that when the ball collides with the opponent, it will make the paddle move. That is a feature you could think of. So we will. Instead of using code to make um, the parallel static on collision, we will use this system in case we want to use it as a feature later on. Alright, I think we also should try if the walls are bounceable with the ball. So let's change the direction of the ball. Set it to 1. Now it should go straight up instead. And we expect it to bounce between the balls. Great! Everything seems to work so far. Um, the last thing we should do, and you should do, I forgot to mention it in the last video. You should save everything using versioning. So you can see this button up here, Colab. If you press it, you can check start, uh, click on Start Now. And what this does is it's uploading all of your progress to a collaboration cloud. So you can download it wherever you want later on. And if you keep programming and then you find out that something you did was, went very wrong, but you can't really find it and you don't want to look for it or something, then you could always go back to an, an the, the previous state your pro, uh, project was in by using this. So we will call this, uh, let's call it init initial push or commit and then you just publish now so this icon over here is blue when you have made some changes 
and it becomes green when you have committed all your changes to the cloud. And if there are committed changes to the cloud that you haven't downloaded to your project, then it will be orange. If we wait a couple, now you can see that there is a green check mark. Okay, now if I wanted to, after say making a change, okay, this doesn't work at all. I don't know what's wrong with this. I could just go to this icon here, history. Okay, I did something here. Committed, it's the common initial commit. I will restore everything to that state. Okay, and it's done. And then if I go back to the code, we will see that the changes I made are gone and everything is restored to the state. Great, let's see you in part three. Bye bye.